Well, good morning and thank you, Dr. Keating, and to Ash for the opportunity to present our data. I'm going to present the subgroup analysis of a previously presented phase three trial, focusing on survival after allogeneic transplant uh, in older patients with high-risk acute myeloid leukemia who were treated with either CPX351 versus cytarabine plus donorubicin. Now, for those of you who may not be familiar with it, CPX351 is basically a liposomally encapsulated uh, formulation of donorubicin and cytarabine, two basic chemotherapy drugs, uh, that are combined into a fixed molar concentration ratio within the liposome. And the beauty of it is that the, the drugs together are delivered in a synergistic ratio that optimizes leukemic cell kill. And that's the concept behind the drug. And we had done previous trials in the phase one and phase two setting with some degree of success that led to the design of a phase three study, which I, I've shown here. It was an open label randomized prospective phase three trial uh, comparing CPX351 versus conventional induction chemotherapy with cytarabine plus donorubicin uh, in patients with high risk or secondary AML, meaning patients that had typically uh, developed AML after having had an antecedent hematologic disorder such as uh, myelodysplastic syndrome. In addition, we allowed patients who had therapy-related AML, uh, a very uh, notoriously poor prognosis uh, type of disease. We treated patients for up to two cycles of induction, then up to two cycles of consolidation on both arms, and followed them until uh, death or five years. The primary endpoint or objective of the study was overall survival. And these are the data that <clears throat> we presented at ASCO this year, <clears throat> excuse me, where <clears throat> it became evident that there was a survival advantage that was attributable to CPX351 compared to 7 plus 3 with a hazard ratio decrease by about 31%. So as you can see here, there was a survival advantage in favor of CPX351, which was the primary endpoint of this particular study. And the median survival of the CPX-treated patients was about three and a half months longer than the induction chemotherapy patients. Now the purposes of this particular presentation, the subgroup analysis, was to focus on a group of patients undergoing allogeneic transplant, uh, rec recognizing that uh, allogeneic transplant is part of the treatment continuum for acute myeloid leukemia, even in older patients. So we were interested in understanding what the contribution of allogeneic transplant was to the overall efficacy of CPX351. And shown here are the subsets of patients who actually underwent allogeneic transplant. You can see that uh, about one-third of the entire patient population underwent transplant, and a higher number uh, that received CPX351 underwent transplant compared to 7 plus 3. The patients were well matched in terms of baseline characteristics. I would like to point out to you that um, a higher percentage of patients that uh, entered transplant did so in a complete remission if they had received CPX351 compared to 7 plus 3. Um, but otherwise, there were really no major differences between the two groups that were ultimately transplanted. And we did a landmark analysis from the time of transplant between the two arms. So we looked at the outcomes of patients who underwent allogeneic transplant, uh, who received CPX351 and who received 7 plus 3, and looked at their overall survival. And as you can see here in this subgroup analysis, the patients who had received CPX351 lived longer than patients who had received 7 plus 3. Again, all these patients underwent allogeneic transplant, um, and the hazard ratio was 0.46 for this particular study. We did a Cox proportional uh, analysis as well uh, as part of this uh, trial. And we, we discovered that as a time-dependent covariate, uh, CPX351 led to better overall survival than uh, uh, 7 plus 3 in these patients that underwent bone marrow transplant. Uh, since bone marrow transplant can induce significant mortality, especially in older adults, uh, we looked at early mortality uh, by day 100, and we discovered that the day 100 mortality rates were lower in the CPX arm compared to the 7 plus 3 arm. As you can see, about 20% of patients in the 7 plus 3 arm died within day 100, and um, about 10% of patients on CPX 351 uh, died within the same time frame. So apparent lower early death rate in patients who received CPX 351. So in summary, we feel that outcomes after allogeneic transplant in older patients 
with high-risk AML appear superior in patients who were treated with CPX351 that included a lower early death rate and the fact that uh, the overall survival uh, was better. The results should be clearly interpreted with caution since this is a subgroup analysis of a large uh, randomized trial. Uh, we feel that this may provide evidence that CPX is a potential bridge to a successful allogeneic transplant in an otherwise very poor risk uh, disease subset of AML and that the reasons for this could include and still need to be verified the fact that uh, lower induction related morbidity and mortality could reflect a healthier patient population going into transplant who would receive CPX351 and possibly a better opportunity uh, to achieve disease control before going into transplant which which may explain the overall outcomes, and these were, will be factors that will be looked into in more detail in the near future. So thank you very much.